Yeah. So this yeah. would have been a Celtic person then that would have been sacrificed. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. Possibly a, a druidic sacrifice. So hello, we're here in the Lake District in a church where no one else is about and we've managed to set up our camera in here. It's really windy outside. What's that? You bet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're here with Roger, who's very knowledgeable on the Vikings, on the Celts. Um, anything that's gone before us. Anything that's gone before us. So what we're going to talk about, if you've already seen my video, um, which is on Ram Loaf in Lancashire, and I talk about the Belbeek people and how they travel up there and who is buried inside, or who, yeah, who's buried inside Ram Loaf, the burial corn. Um, the conclusion at the end of it, we still don't know, we're not sure until it's actually been excavated, but it's possibly a Belbeek person. That's the conclusion that I've come to. It's absolutely a huge burial corn. Um, yeah, and still not been excavated. Um, but at the end of that as well, Roger also has a theory about the area as well. Well, you know, it's the typical sort of terrain where um, in various locations throughout Britain, Ireland quite significantly, uh, England just to a, a fair extent, and, and widely through Scandinavia, um, where the, the deposits of, of the dead have been found. Not people who've fallen in, not people who've been deposited in there for uh, for uh, you know any 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 other reasons than probably human sacrifice. As dramatic as that sounds, mm. um, people have been found who have been quite clearly ritualistically mm. dispatched to the other side. Yeah, so there is someone who had a axe to the back of the head. Is that the person in Manchester? Is it that's the one in Lind uh, that's in Lindow one. Moss near Old Village? Yeah. Um, well, he's been carbon dated to around about the time of the Roman invasion. Right, okay. You know, the 40s AD. And um, it's been speculated that he was possibly uh, ritually sacrificed okay. to aid the cause of defending Britain around the same yeah. time as the uprisings um, uh, that bring names like Boudicca yeah. and uh, Caradoc, or Caractacus as yeah. the Romans call them, to, to the fore. And cannot forget Cartamandia, the false red yeah. queen of the mist. Cartamandias was a first century queen of the Brigantes, a Celtic people living in what is now northern England. She came to power around the time of the Roman conquest of Britain and formed a large tribal agglomeration that became loyal to Rome. The only account of her is by the Roman historian Tacitus, through which she appears to have been widely influential in early Roman Britain. Cartamandeus was a skilled diplomat and a strong leader. She was able to maintain a delicate balance between the Romans and other Celtic tribes in her region. She was also the first documented queen to reign in part of the British Isles, and she ruled her people for over two decades. Yeah. yeah. So this would have been a Celtic person then that would have been sacrificed. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. Possibly a, a druidic sacrifice, do you think? Well, or, or, for, 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 for want of a better way of putting it, yeah. yeah. I mean, the druid order were the, uh, uh, effectively the, the priesthood and the government of the, of yeah. the time. This is why the Romans were, uh, you know, quite rightly uh, feared of them and uh, yeah. mercilessly slaughtered them, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the, uh, the character we're talking about in Lindau Moss, um, was clearly a highly appointed individual. His fingernails yeah. were well cut, his teeth yeah. were in good nick, his hands hadn't seen a day's work, you know, yeah. there were no calluses or anything like this. Really? Uh, and he was, okay. yeah, he, he was clean shaven. Oh. Well, not everybody would have been so well turned out in no, those days, yeah, so yeah. possibly a high ranking sacrifice to bid the gods to great uh, endeavours and achievements. Yeah, you know? certainly, because yeah. I think a lot of the sacrifices that I've read about, they were people who were already dying anyway, or people who would have, they thought, wouldn't really stood a chance in battle, so they kind of sacrificed them. Well, maybe so. Them. And some some of these some of these bodies that have been found were, as many people might rightly uh, surmise, um, were uh, villains and yeah, you know, yeah, criminals yeah. who had yeah. been basically put to death, you know, yeah. sort of by way of punishment. But yeah. not all. Many yeah. of them, uh, as the histories from Roman uh, early Roman settlements uh, attest, yeah. from the, the works of Cornelius Tacitus, you know, one of the, the great sources of uh, information we have at those yeah. times. Um, these people were quite often what he referred to as thrice killed. 
Right, and okay. this is what we find uh, in some of the classic examples. Uh, the Tolland man in, in um, uh, Scandinavia um, okay. found very near to where the, the Gunderstrup cauldron right, was okay. found. The Gunderstrup cauldron would have been a prized possession of the king and queen. It is a large silver vessel that was found in Denmark in 1891. It is decorated with a variety of Celtic motifs, including spirals, animals and plants. The cauldron is thought to have been made in the 2nd or 1st century BC, and it is one of the most famous examples of Celtic art. Um, had his throat cut, okay. he was hanged, there's a ligature around his neck, yeah. you know, almost equivalent to sort of like the Middle Age, the, the medieval tendency to hang drawn quarter people. Yeah, like, you yeah. Know, none of these things would quite kill him, he might have been lynched for a while until he drew, enjoyed his last yeah. breath, then brought down throat cut and then pushed into the water. So his actual uh, reason for death was drowning. Okay, Although yeah. he, you know, he'd, when, he'd suffered significantly. Yeah. And the fact that, the, you know, this, this involved the number, the sacred number. I was going three, to say, yeah, yeah, that's kind of linked in with that, you know, that Celtic I mean, many, ideology, many, many, yeah. that's right, many things are depicted in, uh, in threes, you know, uh, yeah. as we just seen in one of the, the nearby churches, um, uh, an image of the green man, mm. but in a triptych form, you know, yeah. face here, face here, and the face looking out. Where does that come from originally? Do you think it was something <laughs> that the Celtics have been influenced by from the past? It's or? probably lost in the mists of time. Yeah. You know? I mean, these are things that we still hold sacred yeah. without yeah. any real kind of um, mm. uh, logic applied to it, you know, yeah. many of us still use number three as a, uh, a sort yeah. of a lucky number. It's kind of ingrained number seven, into us, isn't another it? Yeah. one, you know, it's been there for yeah. centuries and centuries and centuries. If anybody does have an answer to that, um, maybe like coming from the yeah. Indo-European people, really com yeah, I'll mess message below and um, start a discussion about it, because obviously, um, yeah. yeah, it'd be interesting to find Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, get I mean, there are various conjectures and so on, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah, so we've also come here to the Lake District today because the next video, um, part of it is going to be about the Vikings. And we've just been to the Gosforth Cross, which is absolutely fascinating. Um, Roger was pretty overwhelmed, completely loved it. <laughs> it was amazing, it's, it's, it was amazing. It's, yeah, it's made my month, absolutely. <laughs> Best birthday present I've had for you. Yeah, it is. It was a shame because it is quite hard to depict the imagery on there. If you go inside the church, there's um, a fake cross that actually shows a depiction of all the stories That's to right. do with Loki um, and the start of Ragnarok. Um, Which is the, the depiction of the Viking end of end of time, end of the, end yeah. of the world, you know, where the uh, the Fenris wolf, Fenrir, consumes with a great open yeah. mouth the whole of, of creation. Um, yeah, it's, and it's depicted on that cross, folks, and it's worth having. It a look. definitely, it if you really get a chance is. to go there, yeah. drive up there yeah. and have a look. It's fast. It's in the middle of nowhere as well. It's quite um, a little haunting village, which that's is right, interesting. That's right. With a handy little pub nearby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not that um, we got a chance for a beer. No, I, I've moved too much to do. We had too much to do. <laughs> no time for that. Keep going. Um, and also inside the church, what we saw in there, what was the, the two two absolutely wonderful Viking hogsback graves uh, referred to as such because they're the kind of in the shape of a, a wild boar. But what they actually depict, um, in fact, is um, uh, the shape of a Viking longhouse, a huge, great sort of communal uh, thatched house. Yeah, that's and fascinating. At, at a glance, that becomes pretty apparent. Yeah. But then adorned along the signs with various other images from Viking mythology, the Midgard Serpent, and what looks suspiciously like two huge Viking longships with beshielded and, and, and spear-carrying uh, armies of Viking uh, yeah. warriors. Absolutely fascinating. Um, and as you may know, with the Vikings, once the Celtic, if you've watched my video on Dunmail as well, um, once Dunmail, he fought um, Edmund, and he lost the battle against Edmund. There's conflicting stories where Dunmail, either he was killed by Edmund, and he's, I didn't put this in the video, uh, but after they killed Dunmail, they also ripped his two sons' eyes out, which I didn't put in there, lovely. Standard practice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this you do. Um, so there's the story of either he was killed, or that he was exiled as the, with the rest of the Celts into Wales. Yeah. So when this happened, it obviously left um, a big opening for a lot of the Vikings to come into Cumbria. So at the same time, similar time, they were being kicked out of Ireland and also the Isle of Wight. Uh, sorry, the Isle of Man, Isle of Wight, Isle of Man. 
um, which led to the Battle of Brunnenborough, which was a few years before that as that's well. That's right, that's right, 937. Um, yeah, yeah, and we all, there's going to be a video on that as well. It's a passion of mine, it's yeah, a passion of mine. It ties in, <laughs> again, to something we hinted at in one of the prior videos regarding Angle's Ark and Laugh and, yeah. and various, various Viking figures. And there are depictions of, of this uh, significant battle. Um, that may or may not have happened in one or two or three locations yeah. in our area, but we'll touch on that. Later. Yeah, we've got a few ideas where that could have happened. That's right. Um, yeah, and all over, since that happens, all over Cumbria, um, there are remnants of the Vikings being here. All of them. Yeah, particularly in Penrith as well, a lot of them there. There was recently um, <laughs> someone with a metal detector was metal detecting in a field and they found silver coins, brooches, and um, the indications are there in the place names everywhere, aren't they? Uls, yes, definitely. Yeah. You know, uh, a, a, a lesser known Viking god, Uls, you know. Yeah, which is going to be in the next video as That's well. Right. Yeah. And you certainly find that prefix all over the place. Olverston, Oldswater, and various yeah. various other Yeah, things. yeah. It's interesting as well because when we were looking into this with Uls, it seems very similar to Skadi. Uls was the god of winter, of yeah. skiing, of yeah. archery, which is completely a, a comparison as well with Skadi. So and Skadi being the goddess that consumes the northern lights, right? The yes, winter? yes, yeah. Yes. <laughs> There is a goddess named Skadi who rules over the winter and all its icy beauty. She is a fierce and powerful being, with eyes as blue as the coldest glacier, and hair as white as the snow that covers the land. One day, Skadi is overcome by a fierce longing for her frozen homelands. She yearns for the majesty of the snow-capped mountains and the ethereal beauty of the northern lights. Driven by her heart's desire, Skadi embarked on a perilous journey to the summit of a towering peak. So that is the Absolutely story of that. Wonderful. Yeah, the video I've got just a, it's only a small little video, um, six minutes. Um, have a watch of that because it is fascinating. Oh, she went up into the mountains and um, danced beneath the stars and became the goddess of the Northern yeah, Lights. Absolutely. absolutely amazing, amazing. I just think that this, this landscape of ours, it just yields so much information about where we come from, essentially who we are at mm -hmm. our core, you know? And I just think it's a shame that we just don't look more closely on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. We drive through these villages, we see the place names, we drive past a river, we yeah. see the name, we figure the name of that out, and we kind of give it no creed. Mm -hmm. But these things, these names particularly, um, have, uh, enormous um, significance yeah. um, to our ancestors and to our beginnings, really, as a people, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so look more closely, folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like like uh, Roger says, there's all, just have a look in your town at some yeah. of the names of the places. Sure. Have a look at your ancestry and see where you come from and you're connected to these people, you know? And just you know? stop and think, give it a moment, you know? Yeah. Instead of dashing home to watch EastEnders, give that <laughs> a little bit of a moment. And know? I guarantee you, once you start looking into it, that history will be far more interesting yeah. than Ian Beale. We both, we both reflected today on how we were the only people standing in that churchyard in Gosforth and we were there for what, two hours? Yeah. Easily, yeah. absolutely engrossed in this thing. And we were the only people there all day, apart from one delightful couple from Germany that came in. Yeah, and we're yeah. absolutely wowed when we explain what the uh, uh, what the the the, the synosia of our attention really was, you know, these two great sort of uh, Viking hogsback graves, and they were absolutely blown away, of course, because that's you know the the roots of those people too. You know, we're one and the same, really. Yeah, it brings us all together. Definitely, yeah, yeah. I mean, we also have all the Germanic people, the Celts. Originally, we come from, from the um, Indo-European people, and we were all separated into our. Yeah. That was one of the interesting things, actually, when I was um, writing about Dunmail, is that we've all originally come from these Indo-European people, and then when these battles were happening, um, if you watch the video, we talk about the Anglo-Saxons were there, the Picts, the um, the Celts, and we all started off as one people, we separated and they seem to have come back sure. into this battle right. of Brunnenborough thousands of That's years right. later, which, which was... we will cover in some detail, I, I'm hoping, you know. Definitely, but, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. In, yeah. in, in short form, it was a, an attempt to confederate the people of Britain. Yeah. Um, 
particularly the Scots, the uh, the, the Cumbrians, or, or as the Welsh refer to them in the modern day, the Cymry, you know, yeah. it comes from the same language, Celtic language root. Those people occupied the land that we're sitting right in the middle of here, between the River Ribble and, the, and Strathclyde, right up in Scotland. Mm -hmm. That was Welsh territory, you know. And uh, the Vikings came over and attempted to confederate all these people in an attempt to drive the English out of the island, back yeah. down to Sandwich, or Aber Sandwich as it was called then, and then divide the country up between them. Yeah. Of course, it didn't work out quite that way. <laughs> no, the Anglo-Saxons took over. That's right, I'll <laughs> stand one stand day, stand. but more of that in the future. We're going <laughs> to fill you in on some detail on the next, uh, next one or two uh, visits. Yeah. Fantastic.